Hello everyone, I'm Chen Jieli from China. I did a joint PhD project in China Agricultural University and uh, Wageningen University. I just finished my thesis in September, so today I would like to give a presentation about a meta-analysis study in my thesis. The title is Syndromes of Production in Intercropping Impact Yield Gain. First, why I did this meta-analysis? We know that LER is commonly used to assess whether there is overyielding by intercropping. It is the sum of the relative yields of two species. LER larger than one means more land is needed for soil crops to produce the same yield as in intercrops. For instance, in this figure, to produce the same yield of one hectare of intercrops, we need 0.7 hectare of soil crop 1 and 0.7 hectare of soil crop 2. So LER is a measure for land use efficiency, but not for productivity. So our question is, how large is the yield gain of intercropping in the unit of green weight per hectare? Then we want to use the uh, net effect to reflect the yield gain of intercropping. The net effect is often used in the biodiversity experiments. Here in this figure, we can see the net effect is the yield gain, which means the difference between the observed yield and the expected yield. The expected yield is calculated as the monoculture yield and the land share of each species in intercropping. And we also know that there are many different intercropping systems. For instance, the temporal and uh, spatial arrangements are different, such as the simultaneous intercropping and the relay intercropping, the alternate row intercropping and the mixed intercropping. And the species combinations are also different, such as the short greens and legumes intercropped with the maize, which are the C3 and C4 intercrops, and the legumes intercropped with the short green cereals, which are the C3, C3 intercrops. Our previous study showed that the intercrops with maize have higher yield gain than the intercrops without maize based on the studies conducted in China. And the LER increases with larger temporal niche differentiation in other meta analysis. Here, TND means uh, an index quantifying the non uh, overlap period as a proportion of the total growing period of intercrops. TND is zero for simultaneous intercropping and the TND is one when the first species is harvested be before the second one is soon. Previous study also showed that LER is greater at low than at high nutrient input. So our second question is that how do these management factors such as species choice, temporal niche differentiation, and fertilizer input affect the yield gain in intercropping? So we did a global meta-analysis by building two datasets. One is about the field experiments conducted in China, and the other one is about the in field experiments about intercropping conducted outside China. And uh, now we can see the results. It shows that the average net effect of intercropping um, is about 1.5 ton per hectare, and uh, we can see in this global meta uh, analysis. Uh, we found that there are two different uh, intercropping systems, with maize and uh, without maize. And the results show that the yield gain of intercropping depends on species combinations. We can see in this figure, 
the net effect of intercrops with maize is larger than that without maize, regardless of the nitrogen fertilizer input level. And uh, we found that um, intercrops with maize had a larger TND. Uh, so, uh, we can see in figure A, the red bars uh, represent the intercrops with maize. So the TND of uh, intercrops with maize is larger than uh, the green bars representing the intercrops without maize, and also the nitrogen fertilizer input in the intercrops with maize is also higher than the intercrops without maize. Uh, that is same for the yield level of the uh, these two intercropping systems. We think uh, the reason could be maize uh, loss large temporal niche differentiation because maize uh, can adapt to the high temperature uh, so maize can be sown uh, later than the C3 species so uh, the co-growth period of maize and the C3 species is uh, shorter than the simultaneous uh, intercropping and uh, maize is a high yielding species so it requires high inputs uh, of the fertilizers. And we also found that the intercrops with maize were mostly in strip, as shown in figure A uh, by the red bars um, with the strip intercropping. And uh, in figure B, we found that uh, most of the intercrops with maize are originated from China. But the intercrops without maize were mostly originated outside China, and uh, the intercrops without maize are normally um, the legumes intercropped with the small grains, uh, as shown by Figure C, uh, the pink bar. But for the intercrops with maize, uh, in Figure C, uh, as the red bars. So most of uh, them are the maize intercropped with the legume. So uh, in the PCA results, we found two syndromes of intercropping, which means uh, the management factors often occur together. For instance, uh, the net effect associates with temporal niche differentiation, strip intercropping, and uh, high yield and the high nitrate input. And uh, uh, this high net effect uh, are for the intercrops with maize uh, and uh, in strip and uh, practiced in China. On the other hand, uh, the low net effect associates with intercrops without maize, which are mixed intercropping or the alternate row intercropping and practiced outside China. So we want to know why there are two syndromes. We think uh, the, the two syndromes could reflect different production objectives. For instance, in China, we aim to have high productivity and high land use efficiency. So the maize um, intercropping is practiced uh, and applied with high uh, nutrient input and uh, large temporal niche differentiation because of the maize presence. And also uh, the maize intercropping is a strip intercropping because of the high, uh, the tall maize in the intercropping. So the strip intercropping can um, reduce the light competition between the tall maize and other species. And uh, these intercropping systems are largely hand op operated uh, with some small machinery. But in other countries outside China, um, farmers aim to reduce the input. So they use the legume intercropping with the low fertilizer input, and the intercrops are simultaneous. Uh, simultaneous sowing and harvesting and uh, fully mixed to um, operate with the large machinery and also for the aim of bulk use of the product and the separation after the harvest.
and our result also show uh, that uh, both intergroups have a large LER and also the nitrogen fertilizer equivalent ratio and the phosphorus fertilizer equivalent ratio, which are both larger than one. That means the both intergrouping systems with and without maize save land and fertilizer input compared to the monocultures. So from our study, we can see that intercropping can be adapted to both low input and high input agriculture. And the strip relay intercropping with maize is adapted to the global warming. However, further research is needed to address the environmental benefits of high input intercropping. And of course, mechanization is a, a still a big challenge. In China, uh, there are currently some small machinery for sowing, fertilizing, and the harvest of the uh, maize soybean intercropping, but we still need to design proper ways and uh, configuration for the suitable machinery. Uh, in France, uh, there are some uh, machinery for harvest of the simultaneous intercropping. But uh, uh, if we want to have a high price of the green for the human consumption, we still need some machinery for sorting with the high purity. So in summary, from our study, uh, the intercrops with maize have the average yield gain as 2.1 ton per hectare, which is four times higher uh, than the intercrops with maize, without maize, which is um, 0 0.5 ton per hectare. Uh, the high net effect of intercrops with maize because of the substantial temporal niche differentiation and uh, the maize intercropping are arranged in strips and with high nutrient inputs. This intercropping system is practiced in China, but the intercrops without maize are mostly simultaneous intercropping have same growing period and uh, applied with low nutrient inputs. These intercropping systems is are mostly practiced outside China. The results also show major increase in land use efficiency. That means intercropping allows reduction in fertilizer input and more room for nature. That's all. Thank you for your attention.